Welcome to another edition of Financial Math for Actuarial Exam 2. You can see here that it is a uh, very snowy day here at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. As I'm making this, it's also getting a lot colder, but I'm toasty warm inside my office here. As we do problem 5.2.2, let me focus this here, in the second edition of Kellison's book, it's a financial transaction with what turns out to be a rational number rate of return. The fact that it's a rational rate of return is now really a big deal. It's just the way it turns out, and it's the way the problem is phrased. Re mostly we do problems from Broberman's book, and we've done that recently. Though the problems in Broberman's book about internal rates of return and what we're going to get to soon, net present value, are fairly long, and I thought it would be good to do some shorter videos, including shorter problems that come from Kellison's book, The Theory of Interest, second edition, and so that's what we're doing here. Internal rates of return, oftentimes you've got to use a calculator to figure them out, financial functions. But in this case, we'll be able to use the quadratic formula, it turns out. So here's the way the problem is phrased in Kellison's book. We've got the internal rate of return, IRR, also called the yield rate, for an investment, based on these contributions and these returns. This is Kellison's notation. C0 is a $3,000 contribution at time zero going from the person, from the investor, to the whatever the company or a bank or whatever investment the investor is loaning money to. That's 3,000. C1 is 1,000. R1, a return, is 2,000. And a second return, R2, is 4,000. These are assumed to occur at times 0, 1, and 2. A word of warning, when I first started uh, trying to solve this problem, I implicitly assumed the times were 0, 1, 2, and 3. I assumed this was a C0, C1, R2, and R3, and it did lead me to not getting an answer, not being able to find an integer n so that the IRR could be expressed as 1 over n. It is assumed here that n is a positive integer. I wasn't getting the right answer. So what was the problem? I, the, my problem is I didn't look at the subscripts carefully enough. So that's a word of warning. Make sure you look at the subscripts these occur at the same time. This is occurring at time zero, both of these at time one, and this one at time two. So this is Kellison's notation. The C's are contributions, and the R's are return, returns. With Broverman's book, uh, since contributions are going from you to whomever you're lending to, you think of those as negative. They are the B's in Kellison's book. And as far as figuring out the IRR, you would think of them as negative. And the R's are A's in Kellison's book. All right, so let's just quickly draw a number line and quickly solve this problem. It's not too hard. We'll end up using the quadratic formula. So uh, C0 is at time 0, and you think of it as negative for the purposes of an equation of value, negative 3,000. Both C1 and R1 are at time 1. You would do R1 minus C1 to get 1,000 as the value at time one with, again, Broverman's notation, you do A1 minus B1, still 2,000 minus 1,000. And at time two, you have 4,000 minus zero, that would be 4,000. So thinking of, it as, uh, think of the, thinking of the equation of value at time zero in terms of present values, you could write it as negative 3,000 plus 1,000 V plus 4,000 V squared equals zero. And of course, we could divide everything by 1,000. Negative 3 plus v plus 4v squared. You're going to have the same solutions if you do that. It's a quadratic equation. We can use the quadratic formula. Let's see what happens when we do that. v is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 times 4 times negative 3, all over 2 times 4. The coefficient of the squared term there is 4. Usually, you'd write this in the opposite direction when you typically write polynomials. 4 times 4 times negative 3 is negative 48, but we're subtracting that, so we get negative 1 plus or minus square root of 49, which is 7, divided by 8. We do have two answers for v, but only one makes real life sense, so we take the positive. v is going to be negative 1 plus 7 over 8, 6 eighths, or 3 fourths. That will mean that i is also rational, 
and we'll be able to find n. It doesn't guarantee that that rational will be of the form 1 over n, but let's see what happens. i can be found as 1 over v minus 1, so that would be 4 thirds minus 1, which is 1 third, and therefore n is 3, and that is the answer. Let's also quickly do this as a future value equation. Future equation of value, negative 3,000. Go to time 2, 1 plus i squared plus 1,000 times 1 plus i plus 4,000 equals 0. Again, we can divide everything by 1,000, get negative 3. 1 plus i squared plus 1 plus i plus 4 equals 0. Now, that's a quadratic in 1 plus i. 1 plus i will be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times, once again, negative 3 times 4. The stuff on the top is going to be the same as up, up there. On the bottom, we have 2 times negative 3 now. That's different than up there. So this gives us um, 1 sixth plus or minus square root of 49, again, is 7. 7 sixths. Um, I could write that as a minus plus, thinking about the negative sign there, but it doesn't matter. It gives you the same answers in the end anyway. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we get, ne get i is negative 5, 6, plus or minus 7, 6, and the answer that gives you meaningful interpretation would be to take the plus. i is negative 5 plus 7 over 6, which would be 2 sixth or 1 third, and therefore, once again, n is 3. Okay. So a little more practice, quick problem. Review these concepts of the IRR, see some different notation. Um, I again do want to do a, still a few more problems before we get into the idea of net present value.